Okay, one of the most common complaints of, of athletes and patients is low back pain. And low back pain is the most commonly occurring problem that there is. Um, one of the things we see most often is people have been diagnosed with a slipped disc or a um, vertebrae out of alignment. It's very, very common. However, those things don't actually occur. There is no such thing as a disc being slipped. There's no such thing as being the, sp the spine being out of alignment. And if it's not out of alignment, then it can never be relocated or adjusted. However, one of the things that can occur is that the junction between the spine and the pelvis, called the sacroiliac joint, or SI joint for short, that joint can be disturbed, and we can have a, a, sac a sacroiliac or SI dysfunction. Another word for that is a pelvic obliquity, in which the pelvis is not aligned correctly. So one of the first things I look at with somebody with low back pain is I look at leg lengths in comparison to each other. And we measure leg lengths by having a patient lie completely supine, get them completely relaxed. I apply a little traction, shake them out a little bit. I look for alignment straight up and down the body. And then I'm going to put my thumbs on the inside of the bones on the inside of the ankle. These are called the medial malali. And I'm going to put my thumbs on the, just below those bones. And now I'm going to look right down on those bones. And I'm going to see if I can tell if one leg appears to be longer than the other. In Sean's case, there's about a 3 8 inch or almost a half an inch difference in the legs with the left leg being comparatively short. And I say that because we can't necessarily tell whether the left leg is short or the right leg is long. But what I can do is ask Sean where his symptoms primarily are. And if they're primarily on the left side, which he indicates they are, then that's the first side I'm going to suspect as being wrong. And so with that being said, he complaining of pain on the left side, I'm going to assume now that, this, that the problem is on the left. And so when I look at this leg length discrepancy, I see that the left leg is short. Now one of the first simple ways you can correct for that is to brace the right leg with my body and just apply an axial traction on the left leg. And that traction force is going to basically be pulling this leg into a, a better position. If it's just muscle that's causing this problem, this can sometimes correct it, just to make the muscles relax. I'm distracting the joint. I can apply a little bit of an oscillation motion. Or I can even apply like a little quick thrust. Now, that doesn't necessarily feel good, but it's extremely effective. And it's only discomfort for just a split second, and then it's gone. And if you actually correct the problem, the symptoms are gone. If that's not enough, and in this case, that actually did make a tremendous difference. And when I look down on his ankles, he's still just a little bit short, but not to the extent he was before. Now, what I can do now is I can use his own body to correct for some of the discrepancy. The largest muscles in your, in your body are the adductor muscles in your thighs, the muscles that pull your thighs together. So I can actually use those muscles to help me correct for this difference. Now, when the pelvis is out of alignment or the bowl with two halves is twisted, it's actually out of position in two different places. The first place is in the SI joint, the sacroiliac joint, and that's a rough, jagged joint with teeth in it, and it actually engages itself much like a key fitting into a lock. And when the, when the teeth of the, of the key fit directly into the lock, it will move. But sometimes you've had that experience where you get the key in, you turn it a little bit, and now you can't get it out, you can't turn it, it's stuck. That's similar to what happens in the sacroiliac joint where the teeth just get hung up on each other. All right. Well, when that happens, you also have a position, a joint that's out of position in the front, and that's called the pubic symphysis joint, and that's the, the joint in the very front where the pelvis comes together. It's also the joint in women that completely dislocates when they have a child. So pelvic SI dysfunctions in women are actually way more common than they are in men. However, men who are athletic, men who are runners, men who are more flexible are more prone to SI dysfunctions. Okay. So if I want to try to relocate that joint, one of the easiest things I can do is let Sean do it himself. And so what I'm going to do is ask Sean to squeeze his knees together as hard as he can, and I'm going to resist. Sometimes you'll actually hear an audible pop in the front of the joint when you do that. So I'll do that several times. I'll say, squeeze now, squeeze, 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 squeeze. Good. Now I'm going to have you spread your knees apart, hard. Spread them apart, spread them apart. Relax. Good. Squeeze together. Squeeze, 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 squeeze. Good. And apart. And the last one I'm going to do is I'm going to actually put my arm 
between his knees and use my arm. Now squeeze, 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 and relax. Good. Now I'm going to put his legs back out straight again, and I'm going to see where we are. I'm constantly re-examining. And right now, his legs are absolutely identical in length. They're absolutely identical. Now, so I know, even though I didn't necessarily hear an audible pop. I know that something occurred in the pelvis. Something happened that made his legs the same length. I can actually go further up and I can look at the kneecaps and see if they're aligned. If you have knee pain, if you have hip pain, if you have ankle pain, you need to look at the possibility of having an SI dysfunction. It's very, very possible. It's also common that people have leg length discrepancies by birth. Sometimes that happens. Sometimes we'll find somebody whose legs are different lengths, and no matter what we do, they're just different lengths. And in those cases, you can assess that. Ask your doctor for a standing X-ray, where they take a stand-up, full-length X-ray, and they actually measure the bones. And in those cases, if you've got a short bone, you might need to actually put a heel lift or a lift in one shoe to compensate for that difference. If you don't, every step you take, you're stepping in a hole. But right now, I'm very satisfied with the position that I've got him into. Okay, it looks very balanced, very level. And if you've got, if you've gotten a good result from this. The symptom response is going to be immediate. How do you feel?、Uh, my back pain is actually gone. So Sean says his back pain is actually gone. So what I would oftentimes do is just let somebody lay in this position, just leave them alone, let them hang out there a little bit, let them relax in that position, and let those muscles relax. So this is a good, quick, simple way of correcting for a pelvic obliquity or a pelvic problem without、um, even messing with the spine. And so, if if Sean's pelvis was rotated backwards on the left side, it made him have a short left leg. Now, if I want to have him hold that position, now I need to strengthen the muscles that are going to help to hold the pelvis in the correct position. So, I want to strengthen the muscles that are going to pull it in the right direction, which would be I want to strengthen the quadriceps, which is. Tightness here is going to pull the pelvis forward. I want to stretch the hamstrings so that they will allow the pelvis to go forward. And then I want to strengthen the low back muscles, specifically a muscle called the quadratus lumborum, which is a big, huge muscle in the low back. I want to strengthen that muscle because that's going to pull the pelvis up from the back. The quads pull the pelvis down from the front, and the hamstrings allow the pelvis to go up in the back. And so we're selectively going to strengthen. One of the exercises I showed Sean was to lay on his back, supporting his knee, straightening, straightening his leg. That activates the quadriceps while stretching the hamstrings. So you want the just supporting. Let the knee relax.、Uh -huh. Let it come down here.、Okay. You want the femur, the upper leg, straight up toward the ceiling. So all you're doing is supporting. You're not pulling. Okay. okay? Now from here,、yes. you hold that position. Your knee does not move.、Okay. You're going to go up. Put your footprint, your heel, on the ceiling. Put a footprint on the ceiling. As far as I can go. Right. So we're strengthening the quads.、Uh -huh. We're stretching the hamstrings. We're also using something called reciprocal inhibition. Reciprocal inhibition is when you use one muscle, tighten up that muscle. It actually reflexively causes the muscle on the opposite side to relax. So you're using your own neurology or neuroanatomy to help stretch this. That's、so、why I, I like this. So I really don't hold this. I just no. You can. You、here. support it. Yeah. But you straighten, strengthen, stretch. And inhibit the hamstrings. Wow. Ow. Okay. The other thing that you're doing with this motion、uh -huh. is that well, many people have what's called sciatica or sciatic nerve involvement. Where the sciatic nerve、uh -huh. comes out of the spine, actually at four or five different roots,、okay. it merges together, goes down the back of the hip, underneath the butt muscle, down into the back of the thigh, toward the outside, all the way down the calf, all the way around the bottom of the foot, and clear into the The bottom of the foot, so people have that pain, that dull, achy, like a toothache pain going down in their leg. Over time, that sciatic nerve, which is the largest nerve in your body, can get scarred down. It can get stuck. It can get adhesed. It can get shortened. So what you're doing here is actually nice and easy, gliding the sciatic nerve through its course. You can't really stretch a nerve, but what you can do. Is glide it. You can make it move better through its normal course. So this is called neural glide.